Hello everyone, it's Simon Keeling here at weatherweb.net. It's Saturday the 27th of June. Thanks again for watching. thought we'd do something a little bit different today. Uh, just do a quick review because we haven't taken a look around sea ice and the atmosphere for a wee while now. So thought we'd do that. First of all though, uh, just kicking off with the 7 to 10 day mean of the 500 millibar flow with the ECMWF on the left. We've got the GFS on the right. So this is for the period running from next Saturday through to Tuesday the uh, Tuesday the 15th of July, uh, sorry not Tuesday the 15th, Tuesday the 7th of July and um, what this is showing us look is still the ridge across uh, the eastern parts of the US on uh, the UK on the ECMWF but just look at the GFS it collapses away the ridge it allows more of a southwesterly flow to come in now actually the GFS is going back more to what the ECMWF was like yesterday where it was seeing the uh, hot and humid and potentially thundery weather at the end of this week collapsing away quite quickly and then a southwesterly flow picking up behind whereas the ECMWF is now making much more of the ridge off towards the east. We'll take a look at that over the next couple of days as we get a clearer picture at the moment. Really tricky to try and pin that one down just simply because um, of the heat that's building towards the end of this week. What's going on? is that the uh, dynamics within the models are finding it difficult to deal with that amount of heat across Europe. And they do a similar thing in the winter, you know, when we have um, really cold days. They struggle with these extremes. So we'll have to see how that one settles down over the next couple of days. But I just wanted to bring you up to date with where we were with that right now. OK, so um, first of all, we've got the Arctic sea ice uh, chart here. This is the extent of the Arctic sea ice. And we've got the average running down here, which is the thick grey line. And then this year is the blue line here. And you can see that we're uh, quite a fair bit below normal here, um, but not as low as it was in 2012. Now compared with previous years, this is how things look. Look, 2015 is in here and we've got uh, 2014, 2011 and also 2012, which all saw um, more sea ice than we're seeing this year. Uh, excuse the uh, weather wolf in the background there, won't you? Um, as far as the actual amount goes, the amount of sea ice that we've got across the hemisphere, um, it's down 1.2 at the moment, uh, in, in total across the whole of the hemisphere, here is the mean sea ice running through here from 1979. And you see how it generally went below that in about 2002, and it's never really recovered since. As far as temperatures go, uh, average temperatures north of 80 degrees north looking like this. The green line is the mean, the red line is the uh, actual observed and the blue line here is zero degrees. And you can see at the moment that we're hovering around about normal for the time of year. So what about the Southern Hemisphere? Uh, sorry, let's not get onto the Southern Hemisphere first of all. Should we get onto the Southern Hemisphere? Yes, we will. Uh, Antarctic sea ice, let's look at that next. Uh, Antarctic sea ice looking like this. Uh, there's our 2015 total. There's the average. And you notice that it's quite a fair bit above average, not as much as it was in 2014, um, but it certainly is getting there. As for the actual anomaly, it's up by about 1.3, and this is the satellite record going back to 1979. There's the zero line running through here. And again, you see from uh, around sort of 2002-ish, a little bit further on here, 2010, we started to see the peaks coming up, and then from 2010, it started to increase. So less ice in the Northern Hemisphere, more ice in the southern hemisphere. Onto the sun, this is how things look on the surface of our star just right now. These are the active regions on the sun. It's not hugely active just at the moment, um, but there's some regions on there that are being monitored. Um, as far as this sunspot cycle goes, we're in cycle 24 at the moment. You see it's still quite a low cycle, certainly when compared to cycle 23. So um, in cycle 24, we're, we've peaked, we're kind of just bouncing along this peak just at the moment. It's coming off quite smartly though, and certainly following the predictions for that uh, fall off into the sunspot minimum. You'll have read much in the papers over the last week or so about that, saying that um, when we get such low sunspot numbers like we had the Maunder minimum in the uh, 1600s, um, we normally go into colder weather, but there's this theory that uh, because of... Um, global warming because of climate change actually that's going to be offset this time around well yeah a lot of conjuncture in that we'll we'll 
see what happens. Um, Cosmic Ray is quite an interesting one to look at. Um, this is the daily Cosmic Ray count here from the 29th of May. Look, there are the dates running along the bottom here. Look at that sudden drop in the count here. So we saw a marked drop coming in around about the uh, 22nd of June. So certainly has taken a tumble in the last couple of days as far as uh, Cosmic Ray count across the uh, globe. Now, for El Nino, uh, this is how things look at the moment. Uh, we've still got the El Nino event going on in here. That's the warm water that you see in here. Interesting to see, look, this warm water across the Atlantic as well. Cooler water northwest of the British Isles, then another cooler area of water here running um, sort of just south of the Azores. Not much change in it, really, apart from the water just west of the US, not quite so warm as it once was. And certainly that's following the predictions of that cooling off during the coming months. El Nino itself is still continuing to increase. This is back to January 2011, and our latest weekly number is in here, coming up as 1.35. So it's still into that moderate El Nino category. Now, it's predicted um, by the CFS to actually get into super El Nino, so getting into a plus three here. So this is where we are just at the moment. You see it's predicted to become much stronger over the coming months. CFS is one of the outliers because most are running in along here as being the peak and then seeing a sharp fall off as we go through uh, November and into December. We're still going with a plus 1.8 as our number um, for El Nino. So we think the CFS is somewhat uh, overplaying this one. OK, I'm going to leave you with that for now. So just wanted to give you just a roundup, really, of where we are, of how the uh, ice looks, how the oceans are looking, how the sun's looking as well. Um, just give you a quick overview as to where we are just at the moment. I'll leave you with that for now. But whatever you're doing, thanks again for watching. Have a great day and keep the sunshine.